What's up guys? I've got a video today on how to use or how to tune up your antenna tuner and this here is a roller inductor style tuner and I want to show something I get a lot of questions about and that is using an antenna analyzer right here to tune up your antenna tuner. The typical method is to use your transceiver and put in a constant carrier into the tuner and tune up that way. The problem is I'm limited to between 5 and 10 second intervals between cooldown um, of using my transceiver and that's just not nearly enough time to take your time and get an accurate tune. So the way that I prefer to do it is using my antenna analyzer and I'm going to show you how I do that. So uh, I'll start off showing you kind of my routing diagram of what I've got going here. I've got my coax switch, two to one here, one on this side, two on this side. The one goes to the RF input, or the transceiver input, on the tuner, and then one leg of that goes to my transceiver. The other leg comes over here to the antenna analyzer. Then on the back of the, uh, the tuner, I've got coax one selected, that goes to my 80 meter Wyndham antenna. So what I've got, I've got the radio turned on to 7490 on, what is that, uh, 40 meters. And right now we're listening to, let me switch to the transceiver, we're listening to a shortwave station out of Maine. And you can see we're hearing about, on the meter there, about an S5 is about how well we're hearing. And it's perfectly acceptable for receiving, which you would expect. If we were to transmit, we'd want to make sure our SWR was healthy, obviously. So t for today, we're just going to use receiving as an example. We're not going to transmit, but the procedure is identical. So now what I want to do is switch my coax switch to my antenna analyzer. I've got my tuner set right in the middle of its adjustment with both antenna and transmitter straight up and my inductor is right in the middle of its uh, range. We're going to come over here and dial in our desired frequency which is the frequency we're either wanting to listen on or transmit on. In our case it's 7490 and we'll get as close as possible. And now what this is showing you is what your SWR is on that frequency. And you can see we are off the charts SWR. We're way above infinity and we're way off of our 50 ohm desired impedance on the antenna. So now what I'm going to do is come over to the analyzer, or sorry, not the analyzer, the tuner, and start with my inductor. And I'm going to turn this either direction looking for a dip in our SWR. So I'm just turning here There, you can see we're starting to drop. So we'll keep turning until we find the dip. There it is. So we'll get to our lowest point, about there. Now I'm going to go over to the transmitter knob, right here, and turn that in either direction to find a dip. There it is. I'll give you a better view here. Right about there. Now coming over to the antenna knob, looking for another dip. About there. We'll go back to the transmitter knob. And then I actually like to go back to the inductor just very gently because this is a coarse adjustment. So just a little movement will make a huge difference. Now I'm back on the transmitter knob and all you do is just go back and forth between the three knobs very gently until you get your SWR where you want it. Sorry about the lighting as well, I've got a shadow right where we're trying to see.
there you go. You can see we went from Infinity SWR to from a, I think it was about 175 ohms to now a flat SWR and pretty much our 50 ohm desired impedance. I'll show you where the settings are at. We're at 389 from 200. We're at about six and three quarters from five and four and a quarter from five. Now, if we switch back to our transceiver, let me shut the analyzer off. You can see we're now listening at about an S8 or 9. So we went up, what is that, from a 5? We went up between 2 and 4, or 3 and 4 S units from where we were originally listening. And if I were to transmit, you're going to have uh, an equal amount of improvement from where you were. Um, because when you're tuning your receive, you're also tuning your transmit. So that's just uh, a quick example. And I didn't look at the time on the video, but I would imagine that process took us um, maybe a minute and a half or two minutes. Now imagine, divide that by five or ten second intervals, I'm going to have to go back and forth between 13 and 26 times between cooldowns on my radio to get that accurate of a tune, which is a huge pain. And it's so hard on my radio to do that that I would much rather use this method. And the way I've got it configured, one of the concerns is that I might transmit into my analyzer. And you can see, since I have my transceiver here and my analyzer here, there's no way I can do that. If I'm switched here, I'm going to the tuner. If I'm switched here, I'm going to the tuner. When I'm switched to the analyzer, the uh, transceiver goes to nothing, which I understand is a concern. But what I'm doing is watching my forward power while transmitting. And if I see nothing, then I know I need to quickly switch that. And luckily, my radio is plenty forgiving. So I don't see a huge issue there unless I for some reason forget and transmit for 10 minutes without realizing it, but uh, so far I've had really good luck with this and uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. So hopefully this uh, made sense and you found some value, I guess, in this uh, video. One thing I'm going to do is come back later and do a more detailed video on my complete tune-up procedure um, with tuning up my radio and my antenna and we'll do some transmitting and see what kind of signal reports we can get. So thanks again for watching, and uh, make sure to like and subscribe, leave any comments below, and I will see you guys on the next video.